Hey everyone, I am with a dear friend, Chris Corsi. Hello, Chris. Hey, good to be here with you. Thank you for having me. Chris and I have been rocking and rolling. We've been talking before we started this recording about a relational revolution that's going on in the church and uh, uh, authentic Christianity being restored to the church. It's kind yeah. of a fun topic, huh, Chris? It is. This is this is one of my favorite things to talk about. Yeah, man. So let me just give you a little more info on Chris if you haven't already known about him. Chris is quite an author. Um, he's written, this is one of his first books, I think, was Transforming Fellowship. 19 Brain Skills That Build Joyful Community. How, how about that for a title? Another one is with his wife, 30 Days of Joy for Busy Married Couples. I love that. So another one, The Four Habits of Joy-Filled Marriage. Chris, you're prolific. And his last recent one, The Joy Switch. What a great title. Now, here's the thing. Almost all your books have the word joy in them, Chris. They do. Uh, that can't be a coincidence. <laughs> no, you know what? I, that's a message I want to get out there. God and joy should go together. So talk about this. So if, you know, if you ask somebody, what do you want? And everybody's going to say, I want to be happy. Yeah. I mean, that's our deepest human need, right? Outside of getting food and air. Yeah. So explain joy a little deeper. How does it fit? And because um, we see joy in the scripture everywhere. Jesus had the oil of gladness on him. Yeah. In his presence is joy evermore. That's the theme of our Daniel fast. So presence and joy, they seem to go together. Attachment, relational connection, and joy. Okay. I just laid out the red carpet. Talk to me, my friend. Well, you know what? I'm passionate about this topic. You know, when I first learned from Jim Wilder how joy is the fuel for our brain and yeah, joy, man. joy is like, you know, what keeps our relational engines running. Oh. Um, it just explained my life. When I heard that, I, I recognized that I was a few courts shy on joy <laughs> growing up. Um, I just, and I was always in the searching for joy. Um, but mm -hmm. because I didn't know the real thing, I was always going after counterfeit, counterfeit. Okay. So when I learned about the real thing, how this glad to be togetherness, both with our families, our friends, our communities, but also with the living God. Mm. It was life changing. Honestly, I always grew up thinking that God was mad at me. That was my, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of joy as I sat in church and, and learned about, learned the Bible. And it was all going through this kind of distorted lens in my brain that I just had this, this unhelpful, um, lie that God was angry with me. And so when I, a little later in life, when I actually went into ministry and had um, an, an interaction with the living God, I was shocked that he was actually glad to be with me. Like I had this sense of Jesus being glad to be with me and wanting, wanting to interact. That just, that was a novel concept for my brain. Um, I just couldn't believe that Jesus was glad to be with me. I expected that he would tell me all the things I've done wrong, yeah, all the mistakes. Go. Isn't that what we think? He was glad to be with me. And so I'm very passionate about this subject because for one, it's accessible. Like we can have joy with our families, with our friends, our churches, our, our communities, and we can have this joy with the living God. Um, that's like, at the end of the day, that's what really floats my boat mm -hmm. is helping people to, to experience that as a reality. Like that is, that reality is accessible and possible. Mm -hmm. And so the book, my recent book, The Joy Switch was really about just helping people understand that God actually designed us with this relational circuit breaker in our head. Mm -hmm. And if this circuit breaker is, is, working well, then I can experience joy. I can feel joy. I can spread joy. But when that circuit breaker is offline, joy is the farthest thing from my mind. Right. Right. Because at yeah. that point, I'm focused on whatever's bothering me, hurting me, upsetting me, annoying me, anything but joy. And so the good news is you can learn to stay relational for one thing, both with 
the living God as well as with other human beings. Yeah. And you can learn, you know, it's not just staying relational where, where we have to like hold our breath trying to avoid upsetting others. It just means that we can stay relational and hold on to joy and return to joy whenever we lose it. Come on. And that's good news. Like that, that is really good news that we have a God who wants nothing to separate us from his presence and he is glad to be with us. And honestly, um, mm. I train, you know, people to learn relational skills. And when I train people how to hold on to that awareness of God's presence, probably the most common response I hear from people, no, whether they're a pastor, professor, whatever their, their background is, the common response is, I feel like Jesus is glad to be with me. You know, that, that sentence, that Jesus is glad to be with me. It's life changing. It is life changing. It, and it is life changing. And when we experience that, not only can we better live with that awareness, but we can also help other people to also live with that awareness. And so, you know, it, the joy switch in my book is basically the things that help us get in our relational sweet spot so that we can experience joy with one another and with the living God. Um, and there's, there's, there's very practical exercises in the book as well. Like people can, I want them to taste and see that the Lord is good. So you, yeah. you, you have to practice it. And that's really where the rubber meets the road. Cause I can talk about joy, but just like Jesus changing water into wine, eventually someone has to drink that mm -hmm. wine and say, wow, this is really good. And wine is a symbol of joy in the Bible. So it's yeah. very interesting to me. Yeah. That that's, you know, one of the ways that Jesus really made his presence known was through joy. Yeah. Come on. Isn't that something? I mean, it is. It, it, it's, it's like, it's almost like the Lord rewards people for connecting with him and each other by blasting them with this euphoric yeah. joy. It's like, yeah. did you like, did you like connecting? Boom. Yeah. Here's a big pop of reward. Yes. So keep it. on, keep on connecting. Boom, yeah. more joy. It is. And you just cycle up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what you're saying is, is that this, so we can go through an experience that causes our relational switch to go off. Yeah. And then the joy goes down. Yeah. And the key is getting back to relational connection for the joy to go back up. That's it. Exactly. And with just a little bit of practice, we can learn those moments where we're like the relational circuit is dimming, mm -hmm. the, the lights are going off and we yep. can refresh that um, with just, a, it just takes a little practice. It just so these things become habits because the goal is to be able to stay in our relational sweet spot where that circuit is on. And it doesn't mean I have to interact every waking moment. It just means if it's on, I'm in the best position to grow joy and to spread joy and, yep. and really to be, the best version of myself when that circuit is on. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really not, a, it's not hard. It's just, we just need the language and we just need a little bit of practice and we can learn to do that. And it is really a life giving, I mean, it's life giving. Yeah. Yeah. You know? In our, in our second session, I'm going to have you do a couple of practice runs, um, to practical, some practical tools, yeah. to get your switch back on now everyone you know consider this in your house is a circuit breaker mm -hmm. and you know when something overloads it that thing goes off and you know you got to go find the right circuit and click it back on so chris what are three or four things that can throw somebody switch off what what can happen that boom they're they're not relational you know they're just talk to the hand <laughs> the yeah. wall is up. Oh, yeah. I ain't I ain't open for business. Yep, that that can happen quickly, like in, in, in a moment's notice. In the book, I call them roadblocks to relational living. And basically, one of the common ones is just threats to self. So it's any time maybe somebody cuts me off on the road and I, you know, I quickly I go from maybe a joyful moment with my wife to suddenly this guy cut me off, which triggers fear, which shuts down the relational circuit. Now my brain is focused on the problem, which is this bad driver who's given me hand gestures and I'm just really now offline. Like just like that, you know. He's, now he's, he's my enemy. 
He's my enemy. Yep. And so I'm in enemy mode. I'm in enemy mode. Now, can this happen to somebody we love? Totally. And all too often <laughs> it does. You know, our it might be our spouse, or our children. No, they do that's very true. Thing. It's true. And they just, we go from enjoying them to resenting them or just, you know, feeling offline. We don't want to be close to them. Yeah, it's not pretty and it happens to all of us, you know. And it's almost involuntary in one sense. It is. Even if, depending on your personality type, I happen to be a go-getter. So if somebody's standing between me and my goal, oh yeah. and if it's the one I love the most, my wife, all of a sudden, involuntarily, she becomes a roadblock. I'm, I'm now afraid that we're not going to reach the goal and she becomes yes. my enemy. Yes. So my switch went, it's off. Yeah, that's right. Lights yeah. out. That's how fast it can happen in a yeah. moment. Um, yeah, and you know what else? It can be unprocessed pain can do it. Loss, if I feel alone, mm -hmm. that can do it. Um, if my blood sugar crashes or I just, I didn't sleep well the night before, the fuse is shorter. Yep. Um, or just, you know what we uh, would say, missing relational skills. So if I'm stuck in a negative emotion, I'm not getting back to joy. It's hard to stay relational when you're stuck in shame or anger mm -hmm. or despair. Yeah. So I want to say another thing. There's a whole part of the population that operates kind of with our relational circuits off most of the time, just because they're solving problems, they're engineers, they're mathematicians, they're technicians, they're computer folk. And the relational side of life hasn't been really, really well developed because they've been, they're getting paid to solve problems. And yeah. would you would you say that those kind of folk too? There's, in other words, there's a lot of men I know. They're engineers, they're architects, or mm -hmm. they're just smart guys yeah. that are left brain, but they're they're not cued in too much on the relational signals. Yeah, yeah. and you know what? That's a great point. And honestly, with a little bit of practice, these these brilliant minds can just sharpen some of those relational skills so that they can still be very good at what they're doing, but they're you know. We it's usually call it emotional intelligence, but that's yeah. basically that's what you get when your relational circuit is on. Then you get those mm -hmm. relational skills. Yeah, I mean, if they just a little bit of work to just sharpen those tools so that they're accessible at a moment's notice, and that's yeah. the goal. You know, we what's even interesting is I, I mentioned in engineers and stuff, but I went to seminary and I got a doctoral degree, and I was around a lot of smart Bible teachers. Oh yeah, and theologians. Yeah. And their relational circuits were closed. So here they are. It's the book is all about loving God and loving people, right? Yes. So they would approach the Greek, the Hebrew, the you know the syntax, the author's intended meaning, you know homiletics, hermeneutics, and and all the the entire time be not even God conscious, yeah. not even relationally tuned in, yeah. and. So that gap between I know the information about God, but I don't actually know God. Yes. That is that is a common culture of seminaries and Bible colleges. You're right. You're totally right. And I think this is an important point that look, we're we're gonna devote our lives to studying the the author's words. We also want to make sure we're interacting with the author yeah. while we study his words and live his words. We want to, you know, keep that relational connection with the living God. Mm. It, it just, it, it provides so much more life and mm. substance and joy to all of that other stuff. Yeah, because the book is fundamentally a relational book. Yeah. So, but it could be approached scientifically or technically and miss the whole point altogether. Yeah. And so then all these seminary graduates that were learning in classrooms, they go out into their churches and reproduce that model. Yeah, of didactic exactly right. teaching and left brain. And, and that's why these people aren't filled with joy because they're getting information. They're not getting connection. You're exactly and right. We're open for a whole radical introduction and recovering the relational side of Christianity, huh? That's what it's all about. And that you, you've, you've said it well. That's Thanks. really what we're after here. God's children should be the most joyful bunch in the whole wide world. Yeah. Well, this is the incentive. To me, this is the, 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 the incentive is this high powered joy that comes. I mean, even chemically, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. there's chemistry involved. Yeah. I mean, God hardwired us for loving and for joy. Yeah. 
You, oh so, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, your brain experiences endorphins when you're in those high states of joy, which means it's life giving and you want more of it. Like that's, that's why addictions are so powerful because yeah. they only counterfeit. The real thing is what we really want. You know, um, there's all kind of research out there now that addictions um, like alcoholism, drug addiction, uh, pornography, these are all really intimacy issues. They are. And they're pseudo, they're, 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 they're providing pseudo joy. Yeah. Like it might pop a hormone, but it doesn't do the oxytocin, the endorphins. It doesn't, it doesn't get us at the level of that intimacy gets us. You're exactly so it's, right. It's counterfeit intimacy. It is. And it'll rob us blind, honestly. It'll just, Man. it'll so, rob us. So you keep, you, you keep, you know, manufacturing your own drug on porn or alcohol. And the next thing you know, you're, you're even in a deeper hole and more miserable. And the thing that gave you this short burst of yeah. pseudo joy is, is now killing you. That's right. So the, the only way out of this counterfeit is to get the real thing. That's it. And that's high level connection with Jesus, high level connection with people. Yeah. And that's possible. Like that's the, that's good. That's news. That's so cool. That's possible. Everybody can get this. Yeah. You're exactly right. I mean, Jesus that's is right here with us. He's right here with you. He's, he's like, you're listening to this because Jesus has been wooing you to hear this stuff. It's like, come on, we can do this together. It's okay. That's right. <laughs> Chris, it's, it's life changing. Life changing. So I'm going to have you pray for those listening and I want you to come back tomorrow. Okay. Um, I'm talking about, I'm talking to the people, Chris, you're going to stay on and we're going to yeah. stop it and restart it. And do round two. So you yeah. guys, this is major, major, major. And this is a great starting point. It's a, it's a book that men will read because it can fit in your back. You know, men yeah. don't often read books, That's right. but man, this book, anybody can read it. It's simple. It's basic, but it's powerful. Mm. I want to recommend it. So Chris, pray for us right now. And then we'll come back tomorrow or round two and do a couple of practical exercises. All right. Well, Lord God, I just pray for my brothers and my sisters who are watching this. And Lord, I, I know, Lord, you wanted them to hear this. So I just ask, Lord, that you would just um, reveal yourself, open our eyes and ears, soften our hearts to be able to receive the gift of your presence and your joy to really experience that as a reality, Lord. Let it, let it be that reality that we can hold on to. That is truly life-changing. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Chris, thank you. And hey, thank you everyone for joining us. We love you. Mwah. See you tomorrow. Thank you.